Hello everyone, we are servicing an R-Series BMW motorbike. To be more exact, it's my 1975 R75 stroke 6. I bought this bike over 40 years ago now, and since then we've covered more than 140,000 miles together. In the previous videos, we changed the oils and the filters, and then removed both of the carburettors. The last thing we did was to completely strip the carburettors, clean every part, and then rebuild them. In this video we're going to check and set up the ignition. For the ignition to work it needs a special switch. This switch is called a contact breaker, or a set of points, or just points. In this BMW the points sit under the front cover of the engine. The points have two adjustments. First, the gap between its two contacts must be set. This is called the points gap. Second, the point at which the contacts open must also be set. This is called the ignition timing. I'll show you where the points live, how to adjust them, and how to set the engine timing. Here you see me, frozen in time, looking intently at the engine. I best press play soon or I'm going to get cramp. Click. I now want to have a look at the points, and the points reside under this cover. Now the first thing we do is disconnect the battery. I'll be telling you why in a moment, but it's very important to disconnect the battery. Now the battery is under the seat, under the toolbox, just here behind the air filter. There is a, a, a grounding lead that comes from the battery down the side and it's bolted to the back of the gearbox just behind the speedo cable. So that's a good place and an easy place to unscrew a bolt and disconnect the battery. Be careful of this little bolt. BMW has given it some attributes just to keep you on your toes. First, it has a bore nosed end just here. This locks the end of the speedo cable into the top of the gearbox. The other addition is this hole. It's drilled right through the centre of the bolt and its purpose is to be the breather for the gearbox. That hole has weakened the bolt, so be careful when we fit in the battery ground lead. Don't over tighten this bolt or it may snap off. Now with the battery disconnected, we come back to the front and uh, the horn will get in the way. So you need to take the horn off. So the horn comes, that's if your horn is still in the original place of course. So the horn needs to come off. Once you've done that, you then take out the three screws that hold this panel in place. And there's one there, one there, and one down the bottom. Now these are Allen headed screws, or Allen headed bolts which are pointing forward. So all the muck from the front wheel fills them up. So you've got to dig all the dirt out before you can actually undo them. Uh, the bottom one always gets full of, of rubbish. Uh, so once they are taken off, you can then start to remove the plate. Now, you've got to lift this forward before it comes down. The reason it's got to come forward is because there's a couple of pins that are tapped into the engine that this cover is sitting on. So you pull them out and then it comes down. Now, as it comes down, the top lip of, uh, of the cover rubs across the top of the diode pack which is situated in the top here. And as you do that, you short the pins together, but you also ground them as well, and you can take out your diode pack. And that's why it's imperative to disconnect the battery before you remove this cover. Once the cover's off, you'll be able to see the, the points are down the bottom with alternators there, and then the, the diode pack. And we'll be seeing that in just a moment. The horn has one bolt and two wires. I find it easier to remove the bolt first and then the two rubber connection covers before pulling off the two spade terminals. The three bolts in the front cover need to come out next. Make sure the battery is disconnected before you pull the front cover forward off its alignment pin and then down out of the frame and away. Right, I've now removed the cover from the front of the engine and let me introduce you to what's in here. The big thing in the centre, that's the alternator, we've got the stator around the outside. What's poking through is the rotor of the alternator, and uh, that's bolted directly to the end of the crankshaft. There's two slip rings just here under my finger, and the carbon brushes which connect to those slip rings are just above. On top of the alternator, up here, this is the diode pack. Now it's a multi-phase alternator, it's a three-phase alternator, and it's a three-phase diode pack here. And this is the thing which gets rubbed against if you take the cover too close and bring it down here, and this is the thing that can get damaged if you don't disconnect the battery. At the bottom, the, the metal thing you'll see in there is the advanced retard unit, and the points sit behind it. The advanced retard unit is 
bolted uh, directly onto the end of the camshaft which protrudes out of the engine just here. So they are the parts. Oh, the one last thing is just here is the condenser. So the condenser for the points is situated just above it. We want to gain access to the point, so we need to take the advanced retired unit off. Now it's a 10 mil nut and uh, it's not done up very tight and it's not done up very tight for a good reason. That thread is the end of the camshaft. If you over torque it, you can snap it off and you can imagine that would be a very expensive job. And there's the advanced retired unit and now the points have closed. We've got the wire that comes in from the points through this black tube. I'll be explaining about this black tube when I put it back together again. I now need a small Allen key. We will unscrew the screw that holds the point in position. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure on this Allen key and so it comes away with the points like that and then I don't lose it now I can drop it into my hand and there's another allen key to unscrew at the bottom here this allen this particular allen screw holds the back plate where you do the the timing but it also holds a clip which keeps the wire out of the way of the advanced retard unit when it's flying around so it's quite important to get all that nice and tight again I'll be going over this when we put it back together again so I'll take that bolt out with its clip like that and now the points are out right let's have a look at the the points uh, I can push them open now and I can see that the points are are fine all I need to do is just sort of put a little bit of, of paper in there and pull it backwards and forwards not abrasive paper just normal paper that will clean them up and uh, I'll just make sure with the meter that we've got a good uh, contact but as far as I can see they're fine again these these I changed the last time I had the uh, the engine apart when I serviced it so they've only done a couple of hundred miles if I wanted to replace them then I'd take out the condenser now the condenser is here it's held in by that screw so there's null and headed uh, screw there you take that out the whole condenser comes forward uh, it has a metal bracket on which is holding the end of this rubber tube and then the spade terminal comes off the condenser you pull this wire through and it comes out with the uh, spade terminal on as well you push the new one back in connect it up put the condenser on and then you're back to where we are here I'm going to clean the points with uh, just a piece of paper and uh, rely on the the spring here to give the contact pressure I'm just going to dip this piece of paper in methylated spirits and now I open up the points put it in and just push it backwards and forwards just like that and there's a little bit of of dirt has come off you can see you can see here but the points themselves are pretty good they claim they look new actually as you can see here I've connected the points up to my meter which beeps when it sees a short circuit you can hear it beeping away there if I now open the points off on off on so I know that those those points are making good contact right I'm about to put the the points uh, back in now one thing that I will do you'll notice that there is a a little pad just here it's spring loaded and there's felt on the outside and that is there for lubricating the cam for the points see the cam is here when I put this back in the cam actually touches that uh, that felt pad all you do is just smear a little grease onto its surfaces the top and the bottom I've just refitted the points you can see them here they're held in with a single screw up here uh, I've put them in but I haven't done the, the uh, bolt up tight uh, the other screw down here uh, holds a clip which holds this wire down it's important that that clip goes in because as the advanced retired unit spins around you don't want the wire touching it 
that comes just there and you see it can it can get quite close so that's why it's uh, important that that little clip is put on and the wire is pulled up inside this tube now I said I'll tell you what this tube is for you notice that there's a rubber seal all the way around the points here that makes a little enclosure and uh, this is in line with that seal now on the housing that comes in there is a little enclosure which comes down and touches this seal all the way around putting the points in a little waterproof container and it needs to be that way because on the side of the uh, front panel there are airways here and on here and that allows air to rush in to cool the alternator and the diode pack so uh, all this rubber around here is just to isolate the points in their own little area we're now looking at the bottom of the front cover of the engine just here and you notice that on the sides just there and there are the louvers that let air into this cover if I now spin this around you see the louvers are just in here and the air can come around both of these sides and up to the alternator which is just up here and then onto the diode pack this is where the points sit and this is a little enclosure that goes around the points so that rubber seal that goes around the points area seats against there and where that rubber tube is that goes into that piece that's cut away just there and when you push this on you've got to line up that rubber with your fingers through the side here it's a bit fiddly and that is how the points stay nice and dry when the water can come in on both sides we now want to set the points gap but before we can set the points gap it needs its cam and of course the cam which is also the advanced retard unit that needs to go on like this uh, you spin it around until the d-shaped hole engages into the end of the shaft and then we put our nut now remember that that little shaft is the end of the cam shaft and you really don't want to snap it off And we just do it up like that nice and secure but not too tight to set the points and the ignition we're going to need to turn the engine over and to make it easier to turn i take the spark plugs out and that's what i'm doing here this is the uh, i've got all the original spanners that come with the bike and as i'm servicing it i normally use those spanners and that's what these are these are the original BMW spanners now these plugs were new a couple hundred miles ago like everything else so I'm hoping to use these again here we go and I will check the gap the gap should be 25 thou but I'm just going to take them out and then put them in the hole again they're just sitting on top and that means it'll let the compression go but it won't let anything drop into the engine I'll just do the other side now the spark plugs are out of the engine we can turn the engine over quite easily with a six millimeter allen key in the center bolt here now remember this goes into the end of the crankshaft and it's the rotor of the alternator i have a six millimeter uh, hex head driver here in a 3.8 drive um, ratchet and you can see that it's, it's quite easy uh, to turn over not so easy if you keep the spark plugs in and you're you don't want to strip this again that's another expensive job so you t we turn it over now it's uh, what we need to do is turn it around so the points are fully open so adjust the points now just so you know that they open and then you move the engine looking at the points so I'm on the I'm looking down from the left hand side of the bike and I can see that the points start to open there and they're fully open there if i carry on this is a twin we've got a twin lobe cam in here and when this alternate uh, when this advanced retired retired unit gets up to about that angle the points will be fully open again which they are just there so i'm quite happy that i know the points are fully open what i'll do now is adjust the points and then i'll turn the engine over a couple of times bring this up so the points are fully open and check the gap again the points gap needs to be set at 15 thou now here are my normal feeler gauges and as you can see they're quite large if I uh, 
if I select the 15 thou field gauge, it's difficult to get into the, the points from the top here. Uh, so what I did, I had a spare set of these feeler gauges. I pulled it apart and brought out the just the 15 thou feeler gauge, which I then cut at its thick end, so it's a hook. And now I can come in here, push it down between the points like that, uh, and then set the points. At the moment, those points, the gap of those points is too small because it's actually holding the feeler gauge in place. So what I need to do is adjust that, and I'll do that just now. This is the method I use to make this adjustment. Start by slightly tightening the point securing screw. Uh, that's this one. The screw needs to be tight enough to hold the point's body securely, but loose enough to allow it to slip. These two pins are a part of the back plate, and this notch is in the point's body. Push the end of a flat screwdriver just here. If you now twist the screwdriver, it will move the notch and the point's body against the pins on the back plate. Clockwise will widen the points gap, anti-clockwise will narrow the gap. I have trouble making small changes using this method, so once I get the gap close, I will place the flat screwdriver just here and tap it to enlarge the gap, or at the rear and tap it to reduce the gap. No matter which way you do it, it's still a pain in the bleeding Oh arts. yes, thank you. Um, well, it's taken a while, but the points are now set to 15 thou. What's next? We now need to check the ignition timing. Now to do that we've got to remove this rubber bung and this rubber bung fills up a hole and it's called the ignition timing viewing hole I think in the manual. The thing is you pull this bung out and underneath there that, uh, that piece of metal you can see is the edge of the flywheel. We're now looking through the crankcase of the engine and in the background there through the hole just down there you can see the side of the flywheel and that's where the timing marks will appear. They need to line up with that mark there. You see there's a little V filed in the side of the hole. That's what they must line up with. Now on the periphery of the flywheel there are timing marks and those timing marks consist of an F for the fully advanced mark and then a white dot and then the letter S land on its side with a line each side of it. Let me show you. I'm now going to be turning the engine clockwise. You always turn the engine clockwise looking into the front of the engine. So I'm just turning, the, turning it now and you can see the side of the, fly, of the flywheel moving and there is the F. Now that F stands for fully advanced and that white dot when it's aligned with the mark on the side of the hole, which is about there, that shows the fully advanced state of the engine. Now that's the mark you would use if you were using a timing light through this hole. And you would rev the engine uh, when the advanced retired unit goes on to full advance, you should see that white dot appear in the hole. It jumps around a bit, but it's mainly, it's mainly there. Now just after that, there is the static mark. Now the static mark is the letter S on its side with a line each side of it and there it is. Now the fully uh, the fully retarded mark is when the top line is in line with the mark so that is round about the correct timing. Now what we would do is connect a buzzer to the points so when the points open the buzzing will stop and that should coincide with the top line coming past the mark in the center of the window. This is my meter and you can set this so if it sees a short circuit between its two terminals it will bleep. I can press this button and the points are closed at the moment and that is the annoying bleep that this meter gives out. I'll just turn that off. Now the timing that we're looking for uh, in the engine, the spark plugs will spark as the points open. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the points to open as the timing marks align on the engine. Now the way that I've connected this in is quite simple. If we look at the wire that goes from the points to the condenser, the wire is pulled off the condenser, off of that tab, it's turned around and then the red lead from my meter I've pushed into the spade terminal just there. Now the black lead that goes to the engine. 
Now it can go anywhere on the engine, it just needs to go somewhere where it's going to be grounded. Now I happen to shove it into a roll pin which they put through the the cooling fins just here and that stops the cooling fins ringing when the engine is run, running. But it's a handy hole to shove my black probe. The buzzer is now fitted across the points and the points are closed and you can hear the buzzer buzzing away in the background. Now I'm going to turn the engine clockwise and we should see the F and the white dot come past first. There's the F and the white dot and that shows the fully advanced setting. We want the fully retarded. I remember there's going to be an S on its side and two lines. There it is. It's gone off already and the mark hasn't got there. So that is showing that the, the timing is too far advanced. So we need to retard the timing just a little. Now, how do we adjust the ignition timing? The points just here are mounted to this round plate. If that round plate is moved either clockwise or anti-clockwise, the ignition timing will become more retarded or more advanced. Before trying to move the round plate, its two locking bolts here and here need to be loosened and then tightened just a little. That boss is a solid part of the crankcase. These two pins are part of the round back plate. If you push the end of a flat screwdriver just here and twist it clockwise, the back plate will rotate anti-clockwise and advance the timing. If you push the end of a flat screwdriver just here and twist it anti-clockwise, the back plate will rotate clockwise and retard the timing. There is another method for adjusting the ignition timing. We still need to loosen the two bolts here. And uh, when I say loosen them, loosen them off and then tighten them up just a little, just so it retains the plate, and then do the next one, loosen and then tighten. And then instead of using the two pips up here and a screwdriver to, to lever it around, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, you'll see that there's a bracket just there that holds a spring still that holds that felt that greases the, uh, the cam. What you can do is put the screwdriver either this side of that bracket or that side of the bracket and then tap the screwdriver with a little hammer. I use this small plastic hammer here. Look at the plate at the back uh, with respect to the crankcase, perhaps even put a mark on with a, uh, with a pencil. And if you want to advance the ignition, you turn it anti-clockwise. If you want to retard the ignition, you knock it clockwise. So if I wanted to retard the ignition, I would go on this side of the bracket and then I would just tap the head of the screwdriver with that plastic hammer, looking at the, the plate with respect to the crankcase, when it moves just a little, I would then check the timing with the meter, decide what uh, needs to be done, and then come back and either tap it here to retard it or tap it on this side to advance it. Once I've got it set, I'll then do the uh, two screws up, one here and one there, and then check it again to make sure nothing's moved. I've now retarded the ignition a little. So let's see if it's affected anything. There's the fully advanced mark and we need to be slowly, slowly here. And we are still a little bit more advanced. Right, we are retarded a little bit more. There's the fully advanced marking. We now want the S. And that's now too far retarded. It's gone on to that other line. I'm not sure where that other line is, but we need to be the line further down. So I've got to knock it back about half of what it was moved. Right, we are adjusted again. Let's see how we go this time. There's a fully advanced mark. That is okay. We're about to put the front cover of the engine back on now and I want to show you this rubber tube here. Now this is the tube that holds the wire from the points and it goes up to the condenser above. We're nice and close because this has to fit in a little gap there that's on the lip 
of the enclosure for the points and the reason it's got to fit in there is that if any water come in through the louvers on the sides of the cover you don't want the water getting into here and if that is left outside when you put the cover on the enclosure will have a big gap here and then water will be able to get in so it's really important that this rubber fits in its correct, correct position there. Now you can either put the rubber there and then bring the plate up to it or what I tend to do is as the plate goes on I get my fingers uh, back here get it behind the rubber and then make sure that this clips into the the square cutout that notch and then once that's in there I'll then push the cover closed and this end finds its own place and then that will fit in there. Now here is the front cover of the engine and the part that we're interested in is the inside which is just here. Now that area there is where the points will fit and that makes the enclosure for the points and if I roll it over like this you can see the that square cutout is where the, the end of that rubber tube has got to fit and uh, it looks like it's on the wrong side that's because this will come out and turn around to go on the front of the engine so this actually arrives on this side uh, of the bike. So uh, what I'll be doing is getting my hand on the inside like this making sure that the the rubber has gone into the cutout with my fingers like this and then the cover will be pushed home. Right we're now ready to put the front cover on the engine we just need to make sure of a few things before it goes on. The first is the points plate has got to be tightened make sure that those screws are tight and also the plate that holds the points make sure that the wire that comes from the points and goes to that rubber tube is clipped in down here and is below the level of the advanced retard unit uh, the other thing to check is the top of this tube where the wire comes out it should connect to the condenser now I take that off to fit my meter so uh, I always check that that's uh, that's in place quick scan over to make sure none of the wires have come off and then we're ready to put the front cover back on the engine. Okay it's time to put this engine front cover back on. Now remember that the battery has got to be disconnected because we don't want to blow up the diode pack which is at the top here so if you've put the battery back on uh, then uh, or if you've reconnected the battery now's the time to disconnect it again. The other thing you need to be aware of is on the top right hand side of the engine right up here there is a roll pin. Now that roll pin has got to engage into that hole there in the front panel so that's at the top on the right hand side and it's the other side of the diode pack to me and that's why we had to pull the the front panel off parallel when we first took it off because that roll pin uh, was engaged. Now I'm looking into the into the gap I can see the the end of the rubber tube and I've got my finger behind it and I'm pushing it into the that cutout I'll try to push it into the cutout this is a bit fiddly it's uh, not the best of designs right that I've got the end of the tube now in that uh, that cutout and now I'm going to engage the that roll pin into the hole which is just there and the other thing you've got to align is on the right hand side uh, of the engine there is a rubber that the rev counter cable comes out of and this slides into a, a slot uh, in that cover and uh, it may need a little screwdriver just to run down the edge to make sure it goes in. I can't see that at the moment because I'm on the wrong side so what I'm going to do is just put in one of the screws. Now the screws I've already put copperies on and I'm going to put this screw in first we need a five millimeter allen key right that started to that's starting to thread in now I'm going to go around the other side of the bike make sure this rubber is engaged which it is there and now I can get the next screw and put that in get the five millimeter hex key do that up and the third screw goes in the bottom so those three screws 
are now all in and I'm just doing the last bit up and that is how you get the front of the engine back on one replaced front engine cover we now have the points back in the engine we have set up the gap so we know that that is correct and we've also set up the orientation of the points within the engine so the ignition timing is spot on and with that that finishes off all the work that we wanted to do in this video but just before we go if you've enjoyed this video can you do us a big favor click the thumbs up icon and subscribe if you haven't done already these clicks will only take you a second they will help the channel no end and it won't cost you a copper penny in the next video I'm going to be showing you how to assemble the new petrol pipes we're going to be putting them back in the engine we're going to assemble both the carburetors onto the engine and then put the petrol tank on and then connect them all up so the petrol tank petrol pipes and the carburetors once that's all uh, sorted I'll then show you how to adjust the float height inside the carburetors and then once that's done we're going to be starting the engine for the first time will it start ah, you will have to wait <laughs> and with that this video is at an end take care everyone and I'll see you next time Could you do something like this? Of course you can.